Hello everyone and welcome as tonight we enter into round two of the pitchskill.io Porsche Cup sponsored by Simclips as we head into our 15 minute qualifying session and we uh, we hit uh, Chris Wright our uh, patron for this very series kindly uh, sponsoring us and um, we've got a sizable grid here tonight for the maniacs who are going to be driving these wild Porsche Cup cars around this Bathurst circuit. Um, I expect we are going to see many, many um, incidents with walls. These cars aren't the easiest to control and uh, this track is, well, not the easiest to drive. So if you uh, enjoy carnage, I think you've come to the right place. But we do have a number of our most talented drivers on the grid tonight, so we should also get to see some impressive racing and some decent pace as our first drivers are heading on to their flying lap at the start of qualifying. We just see a few cars moving out of the way of each other. The first of the drivers to enter onto their hot lap this qualifying session will be Christian Fay. And we will go on board with Christian as we go around this lovely sunny Bathurst circuit with track temperatures getting to a balmy 32 degrees. We have a 45 uh, minute race coming up. These uh, these tyres are going to struggle to hang on in there, I suspect. It'll be interesting to see what strategy these drivers choose to go for in the race, but uh, we can discuss that when we get to the race, as now it's just about putting in the fastest possible lap, as we should be coming across some traffic in the mountain, and it's a very, very difficult part to try and let someone by. But that car ahead of it will be on an outlap at the moment, so we'll dive out of the way as we come through the fast. Flat out in GT3 cars, doesn't look quite so flat out in um, these Porsche Cup cars, this section. And there's a uh, Christian biting the car, and uh, this is not the best of places to have a car in front of you. Thankfully, the uh, slow car gets out of the way, doesn't impede too much. And Christian will descend the mountain, keeping the car well under control. Seems to be taking it nice and safely for this lap. No need to push too much. Still plenty of time left in this qualifying session. Getting an early banker in maybe uh, keeps some drivers off the bottom of the grid as uh, it can be very easy to uh, just uh, push too hard and end up in a wall, which means you have to uh, do your outlap all over again. And with uh, Mount Panorama being exceptionally long circuit, um, having to return to the pit lane and come back out again is not going to be uh, very good for getting those laps in and getting that fast time set. Right, and as Christian rounds the final corner and comes to the line, we see our benchmark for tonight. It's a 206, but very quickly beaten by Ritz Tatsal. He sets a 2042, currently four tenths faster than the rest of the field. We've got three more drivers coming to complete their lap as Chris Wright comes down to the final corner. And Chris will finish the lap with a one, oh sorry, two minute 5.4 into P3 for now. And starting to get quite busy out on track. Drivers now taking to the circuit. Actually, all drivers taking to the circuit. With a 2.05 lap time and a uh, only 20 drivers. Shouldn't be too hard for drivers to find themselves a little bit of space for their laps. As Bendall crosses the line with a 2.06.3. Quite the spread of times coming out with the uh, 
Only the top two in the 204s, and currently we have times ranging all the way to a 213.2 Moravec. See what Miles Woodcut can do. Going slightly deep into the final corner. And it's the uh, police department here in Australia, evidently uh, not suffering with uh, such uh, funding burdens as we have in the UK, as they're able to afford a, uh, a Porsche Cup car. of our drivers to complete their flying lap. A respectable time, 207.6. Just one driver remaining now without a time on the board. And still plenty of time for all these drivers lower down in the times to uh, start to improve. And there's one driver who is... Uh, Improving quite considerably on this lap is Balaj in the Tesco delivery Porsche Cup car. You can certainly see where all of those profits from the uh, recent price rises at Tesco have gone. onto the uh, event, up to 22 cars now. Hopefully everyone who wants to participate will manage to get into the session before the end of quality. As well as just one final corner to navigate. Let's see if they can hang on to that improvement. It was looking good and it's up to P6 for Balazs with a 205.4. And it's looking quite tight from P4 downwards. Less than a second separating all the way from P4 down to P9 at the moment. As we look around to see who else is improving. That's just right to sends the mountain. Does well to... Ooh, I say does well to keep it out of the wall. There may have just been the slightest of love taps there. But uh, he'll get away with that one. The comes down towards the chase. Which is in this uh, new iteration of the Seto Corsa Competizione, exceptionally bumpy area of the track. Really pays dividends to get your setup sorted. Coming through the chase, just one final corner to go. And just right on for a decent improvement here. Crosses the line, improves his time. Just now three tenths of a second off of P3. We can check in with Reese Tattersall now. Who's just descended the mountain and heading down towards the chase. And is en route to challenge for pole position up on his previous best. It looks like Bruce Hassel with a, you know, a chance at uh, going for pole, but uh, might not quite be enough. Good exit in the final corner. And it's close, just 1.7 seconds off the pole, and we will have time to get in a few more laps as we've got yellow flags out on the circuit, up the mountain. Back in with Christian, who's just finished the flying lap with a 205 39. Moves up into P9. As we begin to see drivers getting used to the track, getting used to the cars. 
Times are improving steadily. There's the George Perks. Comes through the final sector heading down towards the final corner and it's going to be on for a decent improvement here. He's found two seconds on this lap over their previous best time. And coming across the line now moves up into P12. A good lap from the rookie driver. As we've got a new drive taking over P2, Ben Smith with a 203.742, just 1.2 hundredths of a second off of the time set by Sykes. As we're going to check back in with Reese Tattersall, who has found a mammoth amount of time in this lap. If they can just keep it tidy around the final corner, could have a real shout at pole position here. They come around the final corner, crosses the line with a 203.6. Eight pole position for now. Still going to be time for that to be stolen off them, but that is a solid lap from Maurice. Times seem to be dropping. We've still got a sizable spread of times. Now's look up, comes across the line. Improves in time, unfortunately not in position. The British driver. And just takes a big old chunk off the curb on the exit of turn one. And that's not going to do his lap any favours. There's a veteran Porsche driver, Sam McCarthy, climbing the mountain and looking to improve on their previous best of a 206.6. Playing fast and loose with the walls. It's a risky driving style, but if you can keep it out of the walls, it may well pay off for him. And he's looking very, very fast in the descent of the mountain. Good control over what can be at times a difficult car. That McCarthy. Well up on their previous best time. Just the final sector to go. Just one minute remaining. Many drivers will be on their final lap of the session. McCarthy looks like a little bit of a slide there going through the chase. But still up. A good opportunity to move themselves up the grid for tonight's race. A little bit of a slide coming out of the final corner. That's going to cost them a little bit of time. Up into P10. George Perks improving again, and oh, oh well, that's that's not going to improve his time. As that is a heavy hit into the wall, and uh, I'm surprised it's really the first of the uh, big hits we've seen into the wall so far in this qualifying session. towards the chase is on for a good improvement as well drivers finally finding their feet in the dying moments of this qualifying session it's one corner for 
Okay. This looks like it should be a solid improvement. Crosses the line for a 206.4. Not a good number of drivers in the 206s at the moment. The next driver to complete the flying lap will be Sam McCarthy, who is also on for a big improvement here. Could be in a good shout of jumping up three or four positions on the grid if they can just hold it together. It's the chicane and the final corner to go. This improvement could even put them up towards P5 or 6, but we'll see. Just one corner to navigate. Oh, and it's a little deep into the corner. A little squirrely on the exit. It's going to throw away a little bit of time there, but does move themselves up into P6 just behind Chris Wright. As it is a uh, improvement in time, if not in position, engagement. And Gossens crossing the line with a 207.7. And that will be our grid for tonight's race. We'll go for a short break and be back momentarily to uh, see the green flag for tonight's race. Drivers get underway for the formation lap. Order for tonight's race. On pole position, we have got Reese Tattersall. Sykes, Smith, Ware, Wright, McCarthy, Endel, Moore, Haig, Langley, Ogden, Eklund, Moore, Perks, Redhead, Gossens, Sinskas, Woodcut, Marovic, Gajusman, Ras, and Kachelmeyer. I do apologise if I have mispronounced any of your names. I will endeavour to uh, learn and do better next time. But as the uh, drivers head around on their formation lap, see what sort of uh, if these drivers can warm up their tyres enough for the start of this race. So we, we've got ahead of us tonight is a 30 minute race with no mandatory pit stops. So these will just be a sprint race from start to finish. And so you've seen drivers playing tactically with tyres or fuel. Fueling up the need for the race, and uh, everyone will need to take these tyres all the way to the end, which with only half an hour race should be easy enough. You see, our driver is going to have to look after those rear tyres. and take a little bit of a beating in these cars, especially around this circuit with all of the elevation changes and the bumpy nature of the track can be easy to lose traction on the rears and just overheat the tyres. We really start to see some of these drivers struggling towards the end of the stint. Start to line up two by two very soon. Not 
ready to start this race. It's a very, very slow crawl down through the chase. Just about the slowest you'll ever see a car going through the chase. Just on the second row of the grid for the start. That's almost time to sort. We'll lead with the slides. Great green flag. Come as some of the cars are still coming around the final corner, so this could be interesting. And Reese has sort of a good start as there is jostling for position in the background and contact there. Looked like there was contact between, um, I believe that was Gossens in the police deliveried car behind. As we see, it changes for position. Jonathan Ogden making a heavy early collision with the wall and that will not be good for his car as you see Redhead already with the drive through penalty that's going to be for jumping the start I would imagine it was Johnny Ogden getting very racy as we head up towards Skyline and we have got close battling up ahead as Bernard Bendel Chases down Sam McCarthy. We come down the mountain so far, so tidy. If there aren't any big gaps really appearing in the pack at all yet. Chase. The sound of these cars coming through the chase is absolutely glorious. We check ahead, Chris Wright is uh, challenging Ryan Watt oh, as we've got yellow flags. Let's see if we can get a replay of that. But not just such a replay of the start. <laughs> Have to see what caused the. Uh, have a instant in a while. I hope we can check to see what that contact was. Oh, as we come through there, oh, it was just a slide from the number 10. And other cars getting caught up in that, so Christian Fake seemed to be the instigator of that one. The outside, you come up the mountain, and uh, uh, if you're watching this and you're thinking you'd like to get involved in these Porsche Cup races, uh, here's ooh, your advertisement to do so. Is to provide some sensational racing. Uh, it's just seen a, another incident there, the number ten car. Oh, look and see what happened here. Up the inside, or oh, a little bit of contact, oh, and contact again. And yep, that's two cars into, oof, into multiple walls. That looks a little bit uncomfortable. A little bit of a gap opening up between some of the cars. We have got a battle emerging over P2 in this race. Ben Smith chasing sights. I don't think I will tire of the sound of these cars at full throttle. It is absolutely insane. These cars are so loud and 
such a whine on that turbo. They come now on to their third lap of the race. There's more battling behind. So close behind is pushing the sights on to catch Tattersall. I'm not sure if there's been a, an instrument for Tattersall. Nope. Just being caught. So now the uh, our race leader is separated by less than a second and a half at the moment. And with some of the gaps all in pace that we saw in. Wally not emerging in the race, but Smith there taking a whole lot of wall on the side of that Russia. Can't afford to do that too many times. Thankfully, the uh, pit rep system, which is the uh, pitskill.io safety rating, turned off for these Porsche Cup races because they can be a little bit of a handful and uh, easier than most to fling into a wall. But uh, these drivers been quite safe. As you can see by the uh, driver cards in the standing Highland House, any of those rated silver or pro generally considered quite safe. There's Chris Wright taking a little bit of a curb there through the chase. Carl's seeming quite stable though. Imagine there could have been a slight risk of it snapping from underneath it, but no such fear there. Come down towards the final corner. A little bit of a wiggle from where. I'm sure as to whether that's him feeling the pressure or just struggling to control these Porsche Cup cars. battles further down the order it looks like more of actually has got past Ras P17 Ras not allowing himself to be dropped seems to be carrying a little bit of damage in front of his car you can see the bonnet jumping up and down and come down the long straight towards the foot of the mountain It's further up the mountain and heading over skyline, Christian Fake. Right on the back of Perks. Seems to be back underway. Well, and they're getting extremely close as they come down towards the chase. Goes up the inside. Can be a little bit risky on this circuit. Incredibly bumpy on the inside through the chase. Got by and oh, now it's going very deep into the corner. Has allowed Gosling through. Deliveries of Gosling and I believe Langmuir. 
very confusing as they're both running the uh, police delivery. between there and right continues. The two drivers seem to push each other forward. And neither have them been pushed into a major mistake. Yes, yeah. Just eight seconds in front of these two. The battle for the lead continues. Just a little bit too early on the throttle there, and it checks the wall, and that is going to neutralise his attack and come down towards the chase. Check back in with our leaders, and Reese Tattersall's lead has diminished further now, just 0.4 seconds ahead as Dior returns to the pit lane. We have seen that driver make a number of collisions with the wall. But throughout the pack, things are starting to settle down slightly now. But at the front, this is still an extremely close battle. The sights seems to be attached to the back of Tatasaw's car and uh, almost seeming like there is string connecting these three cars that are so close together and so inseparable in terms of pace. Smith again with the contact on the wall. These cup cars do seem like they're quite hardy though. Not losing out too much pace after numerous taps into the wall. long straight down towards the field of chase. Neither of these drivers really seem to be getting much of an advantage from the slipstream. The cars in front really need to wait for someone to make a mistake. And uh, talking of mistakes, um, I think we have just seen one from uh, eight who's unfortunately disappeared from our, our session it does see. Now, as close as he's ever been, just 0.2 seconds behind. But as we always say, it's one thing to catch, it's another thing to overtake. And if all we can do is close down this gap behind, but can't pull alongside, it's going to be a very long race here for Sykes and Smith. As Tatsall goes deep into the corner and allows both sites and Smith through. So Tatsall now down into P3. And the competition is race now changing. Tatsall the one having to chase. You see if Tatsall has any more pace. If you can see the yellow flags out for right. And going slowly. What happened? I think we have caught a decent part of this replay because that car is looking in decent condition now and it certainly wasn't when we checked in with it just now. Oh, and that is a heavy bonk into the wall and that is heavy damage in the front of that car. And of course, right, losing out to Johnny Ogden as we just saw. We 
Jesse. Who's Tattersall getting past that Sykes or Smith? Oh, as Sykes disappears down over the uh, runoff over Skyline through the S's, and that has allowed Tattersall up into P2. And that seems to be the way these drivers are changing position at the front. Requires the leader to make a mistake. And with these cars running so close together, a mistake from the front sees you losing two positions down into P3. as oh Jans Veras we check in with it and that is heavy contact into the wall. See what that looked like for the driver. So we go on board. Oh straight into the wall and um, that is very very heavy damage on that Porsche Cup car indeed. position now chasing after Ben Smith who doing well started the race race in P3 and after mistakes from both of the drivers who subsequently took the lead now finds himself in the front but only by a third of a second as Tattersall applying the pressure the Tattersall that mistake he made earlier did not see him colliding with the wall at least not too heavily able to continue with his attack. It seems these two are just pulling away from sights ever so slightly. They come down now towards the final corner. As Bendel makes his way past Woodcut. Ooh, there's a small step mistake in there from Woodcut. We'll see if we can see that again over Skyline. And we're just uh, taking Skyline a little bit too tight there. And he has to dive over the runoff through the S's. He manages to keep it all under control. And he has the car back where he wants it by the time they get through the dipper. at the front, Bruce Tassel continuing, Chase Smith keeping that gap below half a second, lap after lap, really throwing the car into the fast left hand as they come up the mountain, the car gets unsettled through the elevation changes and Smith looking somewhat out of control, the car jolting left and right. And this has allowed Tassel to get right on the back of Smith and also allowed Sykes to catch right up to the back of him. This is now a three-way battle again for the lead. Enjoy the noise. These Porsche Cup cars. We now head on to lap 10. With just over 11 minutes remaining of this race.
Slightly more control of the car than Smith, but Smith finding the pace. Oh, as I say that, Smith out onto the grass is gonna struggle for grip coming through the S's and goes very deep into the dipper. Does well to keep control of it, only losing one position to Tattersall. Keeping sights behind, I'm not quite sure how he managed that as it looked like that car was getting very wayward. And is glued to the back of Tattersall as they come down the long back straight towards the chase. This could be a good run here for Smith. Not seeing a car coming down towards the chase this close behind another car. Could be an opportunity to look up the inside. Smith is good. He's going to be bumpy through the chase. He's going to be ahead as they come into the braking zone. Not quite far enough ahead take the position but is applying pressure and then nose to tail the three of them as they come down towards the final corner fantastic respectful racing between the three of them as Smith bumping his way around the final corner is going to open up an opportunity to sights looking up the inside that's heavy on the brakes gets the move made and they are back as they were at the start of this race all you were to do was to look at the timing tower and look at the positions. You'd think not much had happened in this race, but it's been all change at the front. There's Smith sizing up sights as they both appear to be pushing Tattersall through this first sector. They ascend the mountain. All three of them taking different lines. We'll come up the mountain and we've got the yellow flags out in the third sector. As these three ascend the mountain, we'll check in with Sam McCarthy. Who is looking to try and get past the injured car. Chris Wright. Decent race. Just dropping back a little way and we, are, we won't stay away from our lead battle for too long. As they come back down towards the chase again and it's Oliver Sites this time who's sizing up Reese Tattersall. Throwing it around the inside this time should be far enough ahead as they come into the braking zone for the chicane and Oliver Sites retakes the lead. What a race they are treating us to tonight. As now Ben Smith is looking to apply pressure to Tattersall. Let's just begin to pull a slight lead, but at the moment we're just calling this a, a larger lead because it's now over one second. That is how close these drivers have been throughout this race. And a 1.2 second lead is sizable at this point. Oh, as Tattersall into the wall. Again, just another bump off the wall. Car seeming still to be okay. But can't afford to do that too often. That damage will begin to add up. And making these cars a little bit of a challenge to drive. Always oh, Tatsal deep into the hairpin again and looked like it's just a little impact with the wall as well. Let's see if we can get that from another angle. 
Coming down the mountain, Tattle uh, up of control, out onto the marbles, couldn't get the car slowed down and impacting with the wall again. And that looked like a little bit more of a sizable impact than we've seen previously from Tattle that might be causing that car to handle just a little worse than it was before and is now causing to drop back from Smith, who in turn has dropped back from Sykes. We turn our attention back to the battle between Wright and McCarthy. As Tassel into the pit lane. Damage on that car, obviously too much to carry on for the next five minutes. We have to see where they emerge. And there's a number of these cars. Carrying heavy damage. This capsule emerges now in P9. Right, as you say. off of the lead, does seem to stretch out a little bit. Carthy applying the pressure to right. They dart so close to the walls, these cars seem to skate around. come through the S's, every bounce making the rear of the car just skid ever so slightly. These Porsche Cup cars look like they're always poised on the edge of letting go. And you see a back marker just ahead of these two drivers. Could have an impact on this battle. It's our closest battle that we have on track at the moment. Crosses the line, we will have two more racing laps to go. As McCarthy going a little bit deep into the final corner, having to get the car rotated late, as we've got a car with heavy damage out on track. Quite sure who that is. I think, believe that is the uh, number. Hard to tell at the moment. That car carrying so much damage. I think that is the number five car. Is that a Bendel? No, nope, it's not Bendel. I have no idea which car that is. Then. Oh, so we've got yellow flags out for sights. Oh, and there's impact. What's happened here? As we're coming up the mountain, these next few corners are usually flat out, but Sites getting caught out onto the curb, I think, and then oh, spinning it round and Smith round as well. To so Smith returning to the pit lane after collision with Sites, and well. So she's going to have to limp that one home, but Ryan Ware now not far off of the leader of this race. And there will be one more lap to go, so Ryan Ware, we have to see how sizable that damage is. Sites, as this could be, Ryan Ware in with a shout for the win here. Tattersall is trying to carve his way back through the field. On the back of the garage. It's not often you see a police car at the front of a chase, but to where we are in this race at the moment. As Ben Smith in the pit lane dropping to P9. And 
Ryan Ware is bringing down that gap, down to one second now. And surely he can taste the win here. With the crash that Sykes has had, surely that car cannot be handling at its best. You can see the amount of damage on the front. Corner by corner, Ryan Ware is bringing that gap down. About half a second now. And will Sykes be trusting his car? Ooh. Trusting it just a little bit too much, it seems, as he gets almost sideways. Oh, and he's clipped the curb, clipped the wall, and seems to be coming over skyline sideways. That's not the line. And I want to see what's happened here again. The car just seems so out of control. And then already losing it on the entry to the corner. Wants to keep his foot in, out, over the curb, into the wall. Oh, nearly rolled it. Nearly rolled it again. But Oliver Seitz, who was in control of this race, it seemed, now dropped down. Well, still only to P2. So much was the pace of our leaders in this race. But now coming around the final corner to take the win here in the pitskill.io Porsche Cup sponsored by Simquips is Ryan Ware. Congratulations to Ryan. As Oliver Seitz comes around the final corner and in the end it wasn't too far off of Johnny Ogden taking second place. In the end has to settle for third. It'll be Chris Wright and Sam McCarthy coming to cross the lines in P4 and 5. Got just a little bit of a wait until Andre crosses the line in P6, followed by our longtime race leader, Reese Tattersall, who ends up having to settle for P7. But that's just having to avoid the back of the uh, abruptly stopped Tattersall. Comes home at P8. Then that'll be Perks bringing it out in P9. In P10 is Simon Eklund. And Bendel crossing the line in P11. We have Goosens in P12. Finish. And a finishing position equal to his race number is Nigel Woodcut, P13. Harry Redhead brings it home, P14. John Moravec. Brings the car home in P15. He will be the final of our finishes on the lead lap. As rounding out the rest of the order are Deichmanns, Varas, De Moor, Sinskas, and Chaldemeyer, who uh, seems to have pulled up. Just before the finish line. Um, not sure if that's intentional or he's out of fuel. But that was an absolutely insane race. The uh, Porsche Cups did not fail to provide. So, uh, yeah, if you fancy being involved in the racing, the uh, Porsche Cup will return next week oh, as uh, Harold is able to get going and finish the race. Yeah, thank you very much for watching everyone. We will return next week at Paul Ricard. And until then, please do remember to sign up to pitskill.io for all of your daily and league racing. And we'll see you again next week. Thank you very much.